Out of our car at Oxen Hill Farm, we walk past some animals, horses, turkeys, and cows, and we give ourselves a reminder, this is not far from the hustle of Washington, D.C. This is just a little piece of paradise right here in this highly urbanized area. It's a hike. You need to watch your step as you keep an eye on the views. Then a dose of reality hits Dean Nalyokes with Potomac Riverkeeper Network. We're right here in Oxen Hill Cove and the entire perimeter of this cove is lined with unbelievable amounts of plastic and trash pollution. About a mile down from where we parked, we have a view of what Nalyokes calls Trash Island, and it's not pretty. Piles of shopping carts and tires that he discovered recently. I've been a river keeper for 19 years now. I've never seen anything like this. We got a little mud on our boots so we could come in and take a closer look. Just incredible. We counted about 20 shopping carts in this area alone. Who knows how long they've been here, but they're rusty. Bay Bulletin went along with Nalyokes, who came out to scout the property operated by the National Park Service. How did shopping carts end up down here? I think it's important for people to understand when we talk about trash in our waterways, a lot of it is coming from stormwater pollution. There's a misperception that a lot of it is just being thrown in the river. And while some of these shopping carts definitely were in these tires, what people need to realize is that this is a stream, Oxen Creek, that flows right through D.C. Every time it rains, all these storm drains are being inundated with trash, plastic bottles and cups and straws that flush down into this cove. Unbelievable. Walking paths full of plastic right on the banks of Trash Island. Everywhere you walk, you literally can't stand on solid ground without stamping on plastic bottles. This goes along with the Potomac Riverkeeper Network's trash-free campaign to help raise awareness about plastic pollution. One of the things that we're finding, uh, particularly with plastics, is that plastics are breaking down 80% of plastics, microplastics that we're finding in waterways um, are coming from larger plastics, like plastic bags and bottles that are breaking down, then turn into nanoplastics. Those can be bioaccumulated up through the food chain. It gets into our fish, it gets into aquatic life. Nalyux points to a report on the damage of plastics from the Chesapeake Bay program. There's a water reporter app that allows people to report hotspots for trash. And now that he discovered the problem, he's compelled to come up with a solution. We're trying to create a, a plan of attack. We've contacted uh, Oxen Hill Farm and the National Park Service to try and uh, get a permit and get access down here to at least remove the trash island. Nalyuk says it will take machinery and some heavy lifting along with watchful eyes until we all make some big changes. And stormwater pollution is the greatest threat to the bay in terms of recovery of the bay. And so we can't fix one without the other. If we don't fix trash, we can't fix stormwater. If we don't fix stormwater, we're not going to fix trash. Our addiction to single-use plastics needs to end. We, are heavy. we have a serious crisis on our hands. For Chesapeake Bay Media's Bay Bulletin, I'm Cheryl Costello.